you know you don't you don't need a bunker with a hundred thousand dollars worth of stuff um in in 95 percent of survival situations and that can be uh, a flat tire that could be a september 11th type thing uh in 95 percent of those situations they are resolved meaning help has arrived within 72 hours Welcome to the Woman Angler and Adventurer Podcast, inspiring real women with a passion for fishing and the outdoors to go get their adventure on. Now, here's your fearless host, Angie Scott. Hey, welcome to another episode of the Woman Angler and Adventurer Podcast. This week, I'm chatting with Christian Schaff. Christian is the founder of Uncharted Supply Company. They make a line of personal preparedness products that can benefit anyone, but I think they're especially useful for us outdoor adventurers. You never know when you might find yourself in an emergency or survival situation where having these products could be life-saving. The most impressive, in my opinion, is a survival pack called the 72. The timing of this episode couldn't have been better because uh, Black Friday is this week, as we all know, and they're actually offering an astounding 35% off all their products while supplies last. So after you listen to this episode, be sure and head over to their website and check it out, unchartedsupplyco.com. All right, before we get into the episode, I wanted to share a story that recently happened. So so, the Sunday before last, I was sitting at my computer getting some work done. It was late in the afternoon, and I got a text message from a lady I know from one of the other docks. She said a couple people are stranded on a sandbar and needed to be picked up. You see, I'm on a reservoir, so the water raises and lowers quite a bit throughout the year, and they've already been lowering it down to get it to the winter pool level. So after gathering a little more info on the situation, we headed out to get them. And uh, it was going to be getting dark soon, so we didn't waste any time. It turns out they had run a Sea-Doo jet boat way up on a sandbar around 9 p.m. the evening before. A funny side note, it was actually their very first date. And he hadn't taken a boat out that late in the year. Under uh, normal conditions, he runs through that area all the time. So he couldn't believe it when he hit that sandbar and they went flying. And he said they actually did a really smooth landing. So that was lucky. Neither one got injured. Um, But they were stuck out there and they ended up having to spend the night. It was cold. Not only that, it was windy and it rained as well. Thankfully, they had a tarp on the boat and a little bit of water, but that was it. And I kept thinking, man, the 72 survival pack could have really come in handy for them. When we got to them, they were tired, cold, hungry, and thirsty. And the 72 would have taken care of all that. So I just wanted to share that little story before getting into the episode. So enjoy my conversation with Uncharted Supply Company founder, Kristen Schaff. Christian, welcome to the Woman Angler and Adventurer podcast. I'm really excited to have you on this week. And, uh, Thank you. And you started Uncharted Supply Company, I guess, back in 2016? Yeah, Uncharted Supply Company. Um, I, I, people get that mixed up a lot. I, I think Unchartered, Unchartered is kind of like a rudderless boat, to use the analogy here. But I think Uncharted is a little like just a place we haven't been yet, right? Unexplored. And I think that's usually the way emergencies feel. So that's, that's kind of where the name came from. I gotcha. Cool. Yeah. Sorry about that. No problem. No problem. (laughs) I'm I'm so used to boating and everything. I'm always thinking about (laughs) it. Um, (laughs) So what prompted you to start the company? Yeah. um, I mean, the back background on me, I I grew up in uh, Wisconsin on a dairy farm, you know, doing all the country kid stuff. Um, You know, farmers, I think generally are, are pretty, um, pretty competent people, right? They can kind of navigate whatever happens. And I, I, I went to school at Wisconsin, um, ended up playing in a band in Minneapolis for 10 years. That took us over to Iraq where we did, uh, I did 40 trips to Iraq. I played over 150 shows and guided, you know, the, the pussycat dolls and system of a down and all these bands through Iraq. And, um, you know, that was another kind of exercise and survival. So I went from, you know, dairy farm and hunting and fishing to, um, you know, playing in a band to that going to Iraq and navigating, navigating almost survival-esque type situations out there. Uh, we, we mainly focused on the 
um, forward operating bases and joint security stations, which were smaller, more dangerous places. And then I, I took a job in Orange County, California, um, leading the marketing for an app company. And I was going skiing in Colorado uh, one New Year's, was driving out my F-150 and in the mountains behind Orange County, California, it snowed two inches. And I, I sat for eight hours while everyone around me was completely at a loss as to how to navigate um, what was a trivial weather event to me. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, our, our schools don't get canceled if there's a foot of snow. It's just, <laughs> right. just get, you know, I remember getting out of the school bus and, and digging it out on the way to school when I was a kid. And now here we are in two inches of snow. And, and um, even though I was in a truck with all my ski gear and food and had no problem driving, I was, I was still stuck because everyone around me was compromised. Mm-hmm. And it just kind of slapped me across the face. I, I remember thinking, what if there's an earthquake? You know, this is this is just two inches of snow. How do you how do you have such kind of inability to to overcome something like this? Mm-hmm. So it sent me down a path. You know, the, how do you prepare people at scale so that um, we can take care of ourselves and take care of others and you know be part of the solution and not part of the problem? So I went back to uh, friends of mine that I'd met throughout my life, you know, friends that were guides on Mount Everest, um, bush pilots special forces guys, you know, military guys, doctors, and um, really tried to reverse engineer uh, where our society was at, where their level of competency was at, and how to build something that I thought would materially change um, the outcome of a, of a disaster. You know, at the time I was living in Santa Monica, and man, if there's a million people there and something happens, mm-hmm. there's no way first responders are going to get to everybody in time. But if half those people are prepared and can not only take care of themselves, but help others, it's a completely different situation. So that's mm-hmm. that's been our goal is to create really um, simple, effective products that can be a game changer at scale. Uh, because as we all know, uh, especially you know these days, the, the world's changing quickly. Mm-hmm. So. That was a long answer. But, yeah, no, um, that's, that's kind of how we started. That's awesome, that's a great, great story. Um, and and what what you developed uh, the the seventy two survival system. Uh, what's the what's the meaning behind the name there? Sure. So as I got into researching this, um, I just immersed myself into this world, and the one statistic that came up over and over and over is, you know, you don't you don't need a bunker with a hundred thousand dollars worth of stuff um, in in ninety five percent of survival situations, and that can be uh, a flat tire, that could be a September eleventh type thing. Uh, in ninety five percent of those situations, they are resolved, meaning help has arrived within seventy two hours. So for me, it, it was like, okay, so we don't have to prepare for three months underground. We just need to get through a couple of days, and that means a certain amount of calories, a certain amount of water, being able to be warm, you know, maybe administer first aid, maybe a little Mm -hmm. self-protection. And for me, looking at the way most people live these days, they're, um, you know, smaller spaces, right? We don't all have big farms or ranches. There are people in small apartments. There are people that move a lot, you know, college kids, young professionals, um, retired people who are downsizing. Nobody wants to have a couple tons of, of product taking up a huge amount of space. So, I wanted to build something that was cost effective, that was easy to transport, that didn't take up a ton of space. That was just, it was easy to say yes to, but also would tangibly make a difference. Mm-hmm. I, I actually, I went to all the experts that I worked with and I said, I don't want to know what you have for you. You're an expert. You, you study this stuff, you know, you, you geek out on this stuff. If you weren't home and, and there was an emergency at home and your 10 year old son was home alone, what would you give them? To, to change the situation for them, mm-hmm. to help them survive. You know, I, I wanted to make it really simple and really effective. And that was, that was kind of the basis and the thesis of how we started with the 72. And that was our first product. I love how it, how you've got it organized. And I'll put, uh, I'll, of course, a link to the website in the show notes for this episode so people can go check it out. But everything's just like really clearly labeled and easy to, to you know, find what you're looking for, what you need and what, you know, that specific situation yeah. you're in. What kind of items are included in the in the system? Well, well, back to your first point. Um, you know, what was happening when I looked into the space is not only was it poor quality stuff, I kind of, I call it commodity stuff, you mm-hmm. know, it's just generic, cheap, but it was, it was just a pile of products in a crappy backpack. And mm-hmm. if you reverse engineer from the time of emergency 
very rarely are you uncompromised. You know, it might be dark, it might be freezing, it might be wet. Uh, it may be smoke filled. You can't breathe or you can't see. You may be upside down in the car or have a broken arm. So getting to the right tools quickly and also calming the brain down was, was just hypercritical, mm -hmm. right? When adrenaline pumps, you start making bad situations worse because you have these quick reactions that are fight and flight. And most times those are going to make things worse. So what we did is we organized things. We color coordinated them. We use infographics and we have screen printed instructions everywhere so that if you are in, if you have somebody in shock or a broken bone or you're cold, um, you grab the blue packet and here's the first five steps. And if you get through those first five steps, your situation has dramatically improved. Mm -hmm. So for us, it's not just gear, but it's, it's, it's the guiding voice and the confidence that you're making the right decisions in those times, which once you start having a positive mental attitude and you're like, I got this. I mean, statistically, even that is, that's a huge game changer for being successful in a situation like this versus mm -hmm. not being, um, you know, I, we were on shark tank and, uh, a couple of years ago, season nine and, um, Lori asked me, she said, what's, what's the most important thing in the kit? And I said, well, what's, what's the emergency? <laughs> so when, you know, when you ask what's in there, there's, there's 35 to 40, I think different things, depending on how you count it. What mm -hmm. I mean by that is there's a nice first aid kit in there with 50 pieces alone. I, I don't really count those independently, mm -hmm. but you know, we went through and looked at the fact that the human body needs warmth, maybe first aid, food, water, um, you know, shelter, when I say warmth, warmth or, or stay cool, right? You could be in the desert, you could be in a snowstorm. Um, no matter the emergency or the situation, those things are always consistent. The human body needs, needs those things. So all the things in our kit are designed to get people to sustainable, you know, situations when it comes to nutrition, water, first aid, hydration, uh, shelter, all of that. So mm -hmm. there's water filters, there's several different ways to create fire. There's light, you know, flashlight, glow sticks, matches. There's uh, blankets. There's hats. There's gloves. There's goggles. Um, we even we even made a hard plastic exoskeleton to what we call the insert, which is an organizer where everything is organized inside the bag. That you pull these plastic panels out and they're pre-drilled to make snowshoes or an arm sling or to use to dig. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we used every piece of the kit. The bag itself. Um, I designed a backpack, which now other brands are starting to copy, but it's a roll top dry bag. It mm -hmm. will float you. So you can fill it with oh, air nice. and put it on your chest. If you're in a hurricane situation or maybe your, your boat's going down um, and you suddenly have a life preserver, you can put it on grandma and, and you know, just make things easier. Mm -hmm. So almost every piece of the kit is, is a bit of a transformer and is designed to work together to get you to the solution, no matter the emergency. Awesome. Yeah. I love that there's multiple uses for a lot of the things in the, in the kit. Well, one of the things people make a mistake of is when they build a kit, they, they put a lot of stuff in there. Mm -hmm. And if you have to move or you, you know, you're, you're, you're covering some distance, you're injured, extra weight, extra bulk slows you down. Uh, it gets you sweaty, which then sweat can turn into cold and that can turn mm -hmm. into hypothermia, right? Mm -hmm. You burn more calories. So there's really, um, a need to create something that's not only effective, but, but doesn't weigh 80 pounds, you mm -hmm. know, you, you need to be able to move with it. And so that's something that often gets overlooked, but um, yeah, that's why we think of it that way. Awesome. What's uh, what's one of your favorite items in the system? Hmm. Well, I, I really think what sets us apart is the, what I call the insert and the backpack. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's pretty easy to go to the, the CDC website or ready.gov or FEMA or wherever and, and, um, and find their checklist and, and buy all those pieces. But as I said earlier, you put them all in a backpack and then your adrenaline's pumping and it, it may not be effective. So what I love is you open our bag up, you know that everything's dry, everything's protected, the batteries aren't corroded, there wasn't mice in there. <laughs> you pull up this beautiful insert, you can open it up, you have a clean place to work and it has all these instructions and color coordination. It's just, it's, it's paint by numbers. It's just mm -hmm. a very um, effective way to, to progress in your situation. So for me, the the it's less about the products and more about the guidance i think i think in the end we're selling peace of mind and i think that's the most effective piece of the kit right yeah i mean and there is a you know it does have a a price point to it you know um 
for the quality and everything that you're getting in the system. But when you're in a situation like that, how can you put a price on it? You know. Well, you know that's an interesting um, point. When I started, most survival kits were seventy five bucks or something like that, and um, it was hard to overcome that. But one of the things we do on our website, and you can go check it right now, is we have a link to how to build your own survival kit. Uh, our goal here is to, to make the world a safer place. And if people want to go build their own, they're, they're competent and capable. I, I don't fault them at all for doing that. What we find, though, is when people go out to look to build one of these kits, they start realizing how difficult it actually is to source all these different high quality pieces to get them into a kit to figure out how to organize it so it makes sense in your brain and it usually costs more money than just buying ours you know you end up going to seven or eight different stores and and still missing a few things and that's the feedback we right. get all the time so it is expensive but um it, man if you're in an emergency and you need this stuff mm-hmm. it's it's almost priceless right so our goal was to make something that was affordable that allowed us to keep growing our business and to keep the lights on and, and to try to build something that could, could be purchased at scale because there's a big difference between making something a hundred people can afford versus a hundred thousand people. You Mm -hmm. know, I I think we only reach um, our goal if we achieve critical mass. And so that was the goal with our products. And and you also have a pro system. What's the difference between that and the, the regular one? Yeah, so the there was two pieces of feedback or two things that happened after I launched the 72. The 72 is designed for one person. And I still like the idea of one person because let's say you have I have a kit for I don't have a wife, but <laughs> if I had a wife, I had a kit for me and my wife. Well, if if I'm at work and my wife is at work and we don't work together and something happens, now I've got double and she, she has nothing, mm-hmm. right? So I do think that there's some value in everybody having their own. That said, you give given a family with five or six people in it, um, you know, having a kit for two or more people is, is effective, right? So the pro kit was really designed to accommodate two or more people. And then we were also just selling so many of these to, um, to government agencies, to professionals, so emergency response teams, um, border patrol, FBI, CIA, Secret Service even. You know, these guys are buying these, and they're like, hey, we want to upgrade this piece and this piece, and that's because they are going to use these on a more daily basis versus, you know, the kind of break glass in case of emergency situation. So what we did is we designed it for two, and then we upgraded all the pieces to just be more robust, Um it's it's more money, of course, you know, mm-hmm. better quality products at scale costs more money. But um, that product is now outselling the original 72, uh, two to one. Mm. Um, so what we're finding is people really like the value that it brings. It's it's not double the price of the 72, but it's it works for two or more people and the products are even nicer. So it's um, that's kind of the situation there. From billion dollar ad budgets and arena naming rights to tens of thousands of retail locations, big wireless providers spend big to appear like they're your only option. How do they afford it all? (laughs) That big bill you get at the end of every month. Mint Mobile had a different idea. Instead of brick and mortar overhead, Mint Mobile is online only. What does that mean for you? A whole lot of savings because wireless plans from Mint Mobile start at just $15 a month. That's unlimited talk, text, and data for just $15 a month. You'll save enough that you can get a brand new rod and reel for the upcoming season. For anyone who just hates their phone bill, Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for just $15 a month. All plans come with unlimited talk, text, and and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. You can use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan, and you can even keep your same phone number along with all of your existing contacts. By going online only and eliminating traditional costs of retail, Mint Mobile passes significant savings on to you. Switch to Mint Mobile and get premium wireless service starting at just 15 bucks a month. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash waypoint. That's mintmobile.com slash waypoint. Cut your wireless bill to $15 a month at mintmobile.com slash waypoint. One thing I forgot to or wanted to point out too is uh, you even went so far as in the design process of this to not make it 
obvious that it's a survival kit uh, because yeah. if we are in some sort of crazy situation, you don't want somebody attacking you for your <laughs> survival kit. <laughs> the, the last thing you want to do when there's a run on supplies or food is to have a backpack that says emergency supplies. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it, it's an inadvertent way to make yourself a target. So yeah, our first product was, uh, was like this heathered gray, which is, you know, really it's, it's pretty, it looks stylish, it's cool looking, but also blends in pretty well, you mm -hmm. know, so you're not sticking out like a sore thumb. Now with the Pro, we make, we make gray, we make black, red, orange, olive. Um, people, you know, wanted different colors, um, but our goal was to make them look a really cool consumer product, a little more Apple or Nike versus Army, you know? Right. And I think I think the design of it, the shape, it, it, it tends to look a little less... Um, preppery i think and i think that was an important thing for people kind of adopting what we were doing mm -hmm. so obviously everyone knows that this year has been super crazy with the pandemic and all the other the riots and all the things going on have you seen uh a, like an uptick in in people buying these systems this year because, because oh of yeah that? Mm. so we we um you know i've i've mostly bootstrapped this company since the foundation of it or the formation of it. Meaning I, I sold my house and bought inventory and um, you know, we're just a few years old. We just turned, uh, turned four years old here. And I think that, you know, last year we, we sold out uh, halfway through kind of our black Friday holiday season. Mm -hmm. So we'd ordered again uh, towards the end of last year. And then, and then COVID started hitting acro uh, across the ocean over in China and, and all the other countries where we source products, which is like 10 or 12 different countries. So we had this constraint on products and mm -hmm. we, we really didn't have inventory to build full kits until July of uh -huh. this year. That said, um, mm -hmm. we've sold twice as much already as we did last year. So, uh -huh. Um, there's, there's a significant amount of demand this year. We, we were able to raise a little bit of money. It almost 100% went into buying inventory and, um, we are just seeing incredible demand. Um, I think if anybody's listening to this and wants to grab one, I would just say, don't wait because <laughs> we've done our best to forecast, but given the way this year's gone and, and seeing what's happening, I, you can't really put a price on, on having preparedness for your family and and we've got the inventory now and we hope we have enough but it's really it's been an interesting year yeah and i, I know like you know obviously uh i'm in the i'm in the boating industry and so that has really seen a huge increase this year but so have rvs um and i think yep. something like this would be perfect for people that are hitting the road and traveling because you, you're putting yourself at more risk of you know certain situations coming up. Um, I know I'm actually in the process of getting a, a truck camper and going to do some traveling here. So I keep thinking, man, this would be something great to have just to to throw it in the the camper and you know make sure we're we're prepared. Well, the other the other product we have that I think works for both those situations extremely well is the product we call the Zeus, and it's um it's a little you know, it's, it's a little kind of, I'm trying to think of what I can compare the size to. Um, uh, but it's, it's a battery jump starter. I mean, you can hold it in your mm. hand. It's a, it's a pound and a half. Um, my dad, you know, I grew up on a dairy farm. My dad has, has started, um, he started three Mac semis back to back to back in Wisconsin in January last year with it because they didn't plug them in one oh, night wow. and the temperature <laughs> dropped. Um, super powerful, has USB to charge your phone several times as a flashlight, but we've seen a lot of boaters and camp and camper camping enthusiasts embrace this thing because it's not hard to get to the trailhead, you know, early in the morning and head out for a weekend and come back and realize you left your dome light on. Mm -hmm. And now you're in a place where there's no service. There's nobody around. There's nobody to jump you. And this thing will just start you right up. And same thing with a boat, right? Mm -hmm. You get on the water. Maybe you've got your depth finder on or your, your speakers or your wakeboard boat is, is cranking and you go to start and it, it just clicks. And so instead of trying to flag somebody down and string jumper cables across a couple boats, you just, you've got this little thing and, and away you go. So again, when we look at emergencies, I think emergencies can be, big or small, but having something like the Zeus in your, in your car changes kind of a, a day ruiner into just a couple minute inconvenience. Yeah. I think that's a really powerful way to think about that. 
I just brought it up on the website here. Yeah, that that would definitely come in handy. <laughs> um, oh yeah, oh yeah. Very nice. It's it's very small. I mean, it's like um, I'm trying to think of something else that, that is that shape, but it's mm-hmm. it's like smaller than a shoe. You yeah. know, it's it's kind of like that size. It's a little nice. square, so it's it's pretty cool. Nice. So ha- now you guys have been in operation for a few years. Have you had any stories coming back where somebody was in a in a terrible situation and and had to make use of it, of your uh, survival system? You know that's that's a great question, and it's kind of a weird one because yes, but but different than you may think. Okay. Um, what happens is everybody thinks, oh, somebody's going to be near death, and then like. 72 falls out of the sky and they're <laughs> saved what what happens is when people have these things with them the story never gets that bad you know mm-hmm. so i i think if, if you think of a an emergency going from one to a hundred the emergency gets cut off at 10 because they have the right stuff with them so we hear these stories all the time of oh man i i, I had this and i did this and i was back on the road um it never gets that bad uh, we've had a couple people who you know were stuck in snowstorms and said hey we were you know, we were prepared. We had your blankets, we had your hats. Like it, it was a game changer, a couple like that. But mm-hmm. most times what we hear from people is this could have been really bad, but I was able to nip it quickly and it never, never got that bad. So I, I totally get that these, um, these big life-saving stories would probably be, <laughs> probably be great, great marketing moments for us. But I don't think we don't get them because right. our, our products are doing a good job to stop them first. Uh, yeah. And that's the whole point. <laughs> so exactly. exactly. Cool. What's been the most rewarding for you being, being a part of this? Oh gosh. Um, you know, when I started the company, I, I, I told people, uh, I, I definitely like, I didn't want to just have a job that, paid me money. I wanted, I wanted to leave a legacy and to make a difference. Mm-hmm. And every time we get one of these, um, one of these stories, like we just discussed, I, I have a little, you know, a little proud moment internally mm-hmm. <laughs> or, or, um, you know, every time somebody says, gosh, you know, uh, or every time one of these kids leaves the warehouse, I think, man, that's somebody that's, that's a little safer. And that, that really makes me proud. We've got a very small team, you know, six or seven people here that are, are working extremely hard. And, um, I think we're making a difference. So for me, like, that's what I love. Um, I love that we created something from, from an idea and it's, it's being adopted and it's growing and we get, you know, one day Ashton Kutcher tweets about us and the next day the CIA, right? CIA orders some and, um, you know, it's just, it's cool. Yeah. We got Navy SEALs that come in and, and buy stuff from us. We had a friend of mine that's a SEAL came in and grabbed some stuff before he went to Alaska on, on a big hunt. and. Um, I'm like, you know, these guys could kind of get whatever they wanted and they're here. And I think that's just, that's something that I take a lot of pride in. Awesome. Talk a little bit about the team. Um, I know that on your website, uh, there's some information on there. It seems like you have a pretty robust team as far as people having different backgrounds and such. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when I started, I, I, um, I had a handful of people that were very instrumental. Like I said, doctors, mountain guides, I, in my opinion, nothing replaces experience. I, I would rather, uh, like I just got back from a hunt in Alaska where my guide was a, was a smoke jumper. Uh, he had a biology degree. He had taught outward bound. He had been a biology teacher and he spends his life out there doing that stuff. And I, I would much rather know, uh, what was in his brain versus, Versus a book or going to a class, mm-hmm. you know? So when we started this, I really, I reached out to call it authentic or call it experienced, but people, people that live and breathe this stuff, mm-hmm. because as you know, when you're out in the elements, when you're out in nature, um, it's very different than when you, when you read about it, really? um, there's just different emotions. There's different feelings. There's, there's things you, it's like, Tying a knot might be hard because your fingers are frozen. Like when you're sitting in your home reading a book, it's like, why can't this guy tie a knot? That seems really trivial, <laughs> you know? Um, so for me, it was finding those people that I always say, these are people I would follow into a very dark night. You know, these are the people that I trust that I learn from. Mm-hmm. And I've become somewhat of an expert on this, but I, I, I kind of pale in comparison 
to the guys that I, I count on for their advice and their perspective because they've been in life or death situations. They've mm-hmm. saved people. They've rescued people. They've explored places people haven't been. And I think that's just a perspective you don't get um, any other way. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, we, we run the gamut from, you know, Dr. Eric Meyer. He's a, he's a doctor in Steamboat Springs. He's, he's been a Beverest several times. He um, saved a bunch of lives up on K2 uh, during the most deadly mountaineering uh, event in U.S. history, in, in American history, American climbing history. Um, we've got we've got guys that are business leaders. We've got maybe seals. We've you know it's just it, we're always adding to that team because I think everyone brings a unique perspective that is going to resonate with mm-hmm. somebody. Mm-hmm. So that's cool. that's how we think about that. Very cool. The real deal for sure. Absolutely. Where do you see the future? Do you have like uh, new products you're developing, or what? What's kind of? Yeah, we we have we have um, a really interesting pipeline of products. I, I I'm gonna not talk about them because right. everybody's cop- <laughs> everybody's been copying us lately, and I, <laughs> I um, I'm gonna hold those to ourselves. But um, I, I think we're going to surprise people. I think when we went to survival kits, to a battery jump starter, to a pack raft, um, that just shows where our heads at. Right, we're not making we're not making just backpacks. Well, we may make variations, you know, the pros for two people, the 72s for, for one, maybe we make something that's for kids or for pets. Um, we're, we're just looking at emergencies in general. Like mm-hmm. what, what are people experiencing? What are the hardships? How do we create something that's going to improve their situation in those moments? And then let's build it. Um, so, so yeah, we've got a great pipeline of products. We are working on collaborations with um, large automotive companies, bike companies, um, famous survival personalities on TV. Um, we are, you know, we're, we're trying to build some curriculum right now and, and some more educational stuff. I mean, at the end of the day, our goal is to create a brand that people trust and they come to us um, when they're unsure. Whether that's making them a customer or not doesn't really matter to me. I, I think if we're providing this service, everybody's going to win. And so that's that's kind of how we're trying to move forward. Awesome. Well, uh, like I mentioned, I'll put a link to the website unchartedsupplyco.com uh, in yep. the show notes for this episode. Also, uh, y'all are on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, so I'll, I'll put links to all those so people can follow you. And um, I appreciate you coming on the show this week, and I'm excited to get the word out. And uh, especially for women, you know, that's the probably the biggest audience of, of this show um, you know, outdoor adventures and, uh, definitely want to have something like this in your, in your, uh, arsenal. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, people always say, Hey, you know, who's your target audience? And I, I just go, Hey, ev- everybody's going <laughs> to have an emergency at some point. Right. Mm-hmm. So, so that's, that's our goal is to get this in everyone's hands. And I, I appreciate the opportunity to talk to your audience and thanks everyone for listening. 